Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Live, we're back, we're live. I'm Jay Fidel, having a wonderful Friday on Community Matters. And we are talking about travel today with a professional traveler, Joseph Peach Graves. Not pear, but peach, right? Not pear, yes. You well, gotta... welcome to the show, Joseph. Thank you very much. It's professional a pleasure travel. to be here. I wish I was a professional traveler. Hey, you know, yeah. anybody would think that they would want to be. Do I have it's... to have a lot of money to be a professional traveler? Of course not. You have to have a lot of desire to see the world, and, you know, it would help if you were open to telling people ways to save money on seeing yeah, okay. the world. Yeah. Do, do, I, do I have to have... Uh, time to do travel. In other words, you know, you talk to people and they say, oh, I'm, I'm going to Venezuela for four days. Right. You know, but that's not four weeks. No. In the olden time, you know, they'd spend a lot more time in Venezuela. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you go to, uh, you know, Iceland for three days, even though it's, you know, halfway around the world. So how much time should I allocate for a given trip in, in the travel model that you are talking about here? Right. Well, you know, the thing is, is that people make time for the things that they love to do. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is to stuff more life into our years <laughs> and figure out ways to make you know, that happen. Well, this is going to be on the final exam. The <laughs> idea is to stuff more life into our years. That's right. I hope you write that down That's because right. it's not multiple choice. It's a subjective <laughs> question on the exam. Okay, Joseph, go ahead. And so, you know, in general, your, your ability to travel does take time. It's how you make the time to do so. So if you want to go somewhere for four days, three nights, you absolutely, living in Hawaii, you have to add an extra day on both ends. And usually another day afterwards just to recover from the actual stresses of travel. Um, and a lot of people would say, where can I find that time? I hardly have time to go to the bathroom. That's or, true. You know, so what's your answer to that one? Make it happen. The, the, the funny thing is that if we... Therapy already. Right? <laughs> coach how to organize your day and your yeah. week. No? Find, find yourself around people who have made those things happen and learn from no, that. No, that opens a whole new question. Absolutely. So here I am, Joe Stunk the Ragman, and I would right. like to go to Venezuela. Right. Um, let's, let's change that. I want to go to Laos because we're having okay, a Laos. show about Laos. Excellent. So um, I want to go to Laos, and I really care about Laos. Uh, but I, I don't know anybody else who's going, and my wife right. does not want to go to Laos. She's made that clear to me. Got it. So if I go to Laos, it has to be moi. It has to okay? be on you. So what I have to do is I have to connect up. This right. is a very important question for a lot of people, Absolutely. including me. So, okay, how do I connect up? So there are communities, you know, and that's one of the powerful things about what I do building my travel club is basically I bring together a community of travelers. So me personally, I know a lot of people around the world that go different places and I'm able to connect into that network of travelers. But even if you're not part of my specific community, there are Facebook groups, there are apps that help you connect to people. And the idea is knowing that with the internet, people are able to connect in that way and reaching out, finding, hey, who's been to Laos, looking up TripAdvisor and different sort of programs and ideas to see what's happening there, what you could do there, who you could meet there, and accepting that people travel all the time. Me personally, people always ask me, hey, if you're going to travel somewhere, are you worried if it's safe? And I'm just I, I would ask you that. Yeah, I, I'm a person, if I get on a plane, I look around. If there is a little old lady <laughs> who is not afraid to get on that same plane with me, which generally there is, yeah. I feel like I have nothing to worry this about. This is the plane with the chickens in the aisles? <laughs> either way, you know, <laughs> open air, there are people flapping on either sides. But no, really, really, you know, all kinds of different places. I went to uh, Africa last summer. Uh, I went to Tanzania, and I climbed uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. And it was Fabulous. Incredible, incredible sights, incredible what's the, experience. What's the uh, altitude on Mount Kilimanjaro? 19,341 oh. feet. Bigger than Mauna Kea, bigger it, yeah. than Mauna Loa. Yeah. It's just a hair shy of needing oxygen to go to the top. And it's the tallest freestanding mountain on the planet being different than a range, yeah. right? But in the town the night before we went, I was in the hotel, we were relaxing, I wanted to go out and experience the culture. The hotel told me I was not allowed to leave. Because I was, I was too light-skinned to be in public at night in that area in and Africa. And this is because it was against the law, because you were gonna be in danger. They were concerned for me. 
So I had to sneak out because I personally believe that if you go out in a space and you feel confident, but you don't feel cocky, you're safe. And I had a blast. I met up with some people. They bought me drinks. Could it have gone you the other the way? You were the group that was, was going to fit in anyway. Yeah. Right, exactly. You know, and I found them at a bar. I was by myself at the bar. And this person came up and asked me, hey, do you want to join us? And then asked me, hey, buy a bottle for our table. And I'm like, oh, boy, I got to buy a bottle? That's expensive. All of 19 cents. Seven bucks okay. for a bottle of gin. <laughs> and so I was, like, I was like, let's go. It's medicine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's a good time. And, and that's been my experience throughout my entire life. I've been to Dubai. I've been to by Africa. By yourself. By myself. I've been a lot of places by myself, and I walk and smile and, and spread the Aloha spirit. Well, it certainly people. prepares you for life yeah, in general. Absolutely. I was also thinking, though, I was thinking of that, but I was also thinking of the notion of, um, you know, I, I don't be myself. I right. Mean, I, I appreciate what you're doing, and I know a lot of people who do that, um, but I want to be with a group of like minded people, absolutely. like minded tourists, if you will, and I want to find a group, um, you know, that, that, that I can like. Um, so these clubs, this kind of club that you're organizing yeah. or that you're with, uh, th th does that allow me this sort of opportunity? Oh, absolutely. You know, most of the um, way that my club is designed is we provide travel packages at wholesale rather than paying retail. And um, that concept allows people to go and travel together in groups of like-minded, happy people at well, lower I have to prices. Form I have to form the group. No, no, no. You'll the, form the group. Yeah, the, the company takes, uh, you know, it's all a database ideas play. It's from... It's all a database play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, um, we have, we have a, a portion of our, of our membership where people can add to their dream uh, bucket lists. And as people add to their dream bucket lists in our global society, they say, wow, there's a lot of people who want to do this. They want to go to Laos. They want to go to Vietnam. They want to go to these places. And so they design a trip, and they let those people know, hey, we designed this trip. You can book it. Oh, so yeah. I, I join. I, I, I pay what the membership fee is, I suppose. Right. I join, and I get an email that says, you know, we got a thing going to Laos. Yeah. Next month, and uh, you know, you like it's this, that, and the other thing. We're going to go to this place and that place, and it's going to cost you this much and that much. And um, if you want to join, you know, let us know. Yeah. So then I then I join, and, and, and I trip. have a group. There's a group already. And there's a group going with now, you. Now, is the group all, all like leaving my... from Hawaii? Is, no. Or is the group collaborating, you know, globally. consolidating from... Oh. Yeah, globally. So it could be so, anybody from Yeah, it anywhere. could be anybody from anywhere, and you all have that same thing. It's such a, it's such a powerful concept. I'm really... It, it gets me really excited. I mean, that's do we, do that's we what meet I love. in L.A.? Do we meet in, in you Vientiane? meet there Where do we meet? actually? So you meet at the hotel, you know, in, you, the, in the country of in the country. So in general, uh, you know, especially when we do international trips, there are uh, airport transfers where somebody stands there with a sign welcoming your group. There, they take you to and from the airport. Uh, it, it's really just nice. You show up, they so take care of you. So somebody there, yeah. somebody from the club is there going to take care of me. So yeah. if, I, if I have my long-awaited heart attack between the airport and the hotel, mm -hmm. somebody is going to take me to the hospital in the middle. It's, it's funny you mentioned that because we actually... <laughs> I know it happens. I absolutely. <laughs> we actually, um, one of our memberships has emergency medical evacuation included. So where if something like that does happen, as long as you're 150 miles away from home, they'll take you to your home hospital or whatever hospital you well, choose. You mean in your home country? By, your, by emergency evacuation? Emergency evacuation. That's expensive. And it's covered. It's part of the membership. It's mean, pretty, for everyone. For, for everybody who has that membership. That coverage, a special yeah, membership. With, with that membership. You know, because those emergency evacuations are in the hundreds of thousands. Oh, yeah, up to $50,000 yeah. is what but we it's personally not cheap, cover. You know, it's, it's really 50, incredible. go like that. Like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> it's, it's, a good, it's a good club membership. I'm happy to build it, you know, and I just, like I said, I, I, I believe in helping people add more so life. So is this an occupation for you? For yeah. me, it is. You know, um, not everybody uh, really is a type of person that can do this. Um, what does it take? It, it, it somebody takes, who loves travel, we know that. Here's the thing. Loving travel is important, but not even really the biggest thing. The, the biggest thing is being coachable and teachable. 
understanding that there's a group of people who led the way for you and have a path to success and being willing to follow that path to you success. You have to trust the system. Exactly. System stands for save yourself significant time, energy, and money. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the second question that's going to be on the exam. <laughs> and then, um, you know, it takes desire. You, you have to actually want to have the freedom in life to see more of the world, to spend more time with your family and friends. Uh, a lot of people would say that they would want it, but they wouldn't be willing to put in the hard work to do that, right? You referred earlier to research, you know? Yeah. And I suppose research is important to determine that you want to go to Laos instead of Venezuela. Absolutely. Uh, did I say Venezuela? Argentina, wherever I said. Yeah, uh, that's good too. Um, <laughs> but, I, you know, uh, and, and not some other place, right? right? So I have to do my research. But once I've done my research, it sounds right. like, you tell me, that this kind of club approach I don't have to do any more research. Yeah. The club is going gonna, is gonna to find and uh, assign a hotel. It's going to help me with tours on, in, in the city, whatever. Uh, it's going to help me with, mm, really, restaurants, all I need to, yeah. all I need to do, right? So yeah, I don't, They, I, they I do can, all the reservations and planning for you from the mindset of a group of professionals who yeah. do this all the time, so yeah. you know it's good. One thing that's really cool, uh, we guarantee the best price. If you find one of our trips one penny cheaper, we give you all your money back and send you on the trip for free, which is pretty incredible. Ooh, wow. And when you get to the location, there is a host that the company employs who lives in the area who is there specifically to be your personal concierge. So questions like you said about He's the one that takes you to the tours. hospital. Or, exactly. Yeah. He's, he's, the one, he's the one who calls the plane. Yeah. He's the one. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a neat, neat But concept. we've been so far, we've been talking about like one single country. Correct. Do these tours ever include like all, of, for example, Southeast Asia, a number of countries? You know, the, the easiest way to see a number of countries in a single trip is through a cruise. Cruises are incredible, and you know a lot of cruises will go. Obviously, Caribbean, Asia, they're not so much Africa. So I can go on a cruise using the same system. Of course, yeah. We we any any number of different travel opportunities. And then, for example, what I did, I went to Thailand, and when I was in Thailand, uh, I wanted to see a bunch of Thailand. We had two different trips that were four days, three nights each, and I just went from one to the other, and I just chose to do them back to back. And right. people can do that. So right. if you want to be gone a month and you want to see all of, you know, Southeast Asia, you can do that. You well, can well, just say, back token, to back. You can go to Thailand, go go to uh, Yangon. And is that right? No, that's that's not Thailand. I'm not sure. Not I went Thailand. to Chiang Mai, Koh Samui, and uh, Bangkok. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yangon is in is in Burma. Oh, okay. But, cool. Um, Anyway, so you go to go, <laughs> sorry, you, okay. you go, go to Thailand, go to go to uh, Bangkok. Uh, right. You have a nice time in Bangkok and up and down in, yeah. in, in Thailand, and then you say, "Well, I like it so much here, I'm going to stay after the fact." You absolutely can do that. Right. Yeah, that's really incredible. My dad actually, um, after I went to Thailand, he decided to uh, go out there for extended periods of time. He stays out there ten months a year. So now. does this mean that my air transportation is? Part of the package or not part of the package? Generally not. So you have the flexibility to do whatever you'd like. Do you help me? Does, of course. Does, does the, what do you call it, club yeah. help me? We have our own booking engine, just like Travelocity or Expedia, except ours. We basically guarantee the best price because we own it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we make all the arrangements easy for you to do. So are, are your prices, I mean, for the airfare through yeah. this travel engine, uh, airline engine, whatever it is, yeah. um, and you know the, the tour package right. that I get on the ground. Yeah, how much cheaper than the average cost would they be? I mean, right. is it remarkably cheaper. So with with flights right now, we don't own an airline. We just guarantee the best. If you find it is that somewhere coming soon, I, I'm telling you, <laughs> it, it, we are the fastest growing travel club in the world, and currently the largest travel club in the world, and just the things that are possible, we're planning on doing to uh, the travel industry what Netflix did to Blockbuster. It, it's going to be mind-blowing. But the uh, flights are just guaranteed best. So sometimes we'll be exactly the same, sometimes we'll be five bucks cheaper. If we're more, we offer you 110% of the difference back that you can use for future flights. But with regards to the actual um, you know, trips, the, the experiences that we offer, it's usually between seven, 40 and 70% lower in price. Oh, that's it's, significant. It's, it's because we're able to buy in bulk. Mm, that's so the we idea. drive the prices down. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, we're going to take a short break, Joe. Sounds good. Uh, that's Joe Graves, Joe Peach Graves, if you don't mind. That's me. Professional traveler. I wish I did that. Maybe we can talk more about that <laughs> later. Will. We're going to have a short break. We'll come back. We'll still be here. We're not going anywhere. Aloha. I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Okay, Joe Graves, Joe Peach Graves, if yes, you don't sir. mind. Okay, talking about travel, and indeed, let me ask you this, aside from the, the club approach, which, which sounds like it will proliferate, you know, in, yeah. in many clubs yeah. uh, around the world, would you say to me now here today that there's more, uh, call it consumer or everyman type travel that's happening these days than happened, say, five or ten years ago? It, it, it's really growing. The, the internet has made everything completely, completely different. People now, the most posted picture on any sort of social media are travel pictures. And so people want to travel more. Everyone is looking for ways. And so, you know, I've heard of rolfing. Have you heard of rolfing? It's, it's a, where you go and you, you get a massage. <laughs> no, it's a, you actually you go and you work at farm co-ops around the world as a volunteer, and they allow you to stay at their location for cheap or for free. There are other sorts of you know work while you travel co-ops and all kinds of different things because people want to explore more because they're yeah. seeing it more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We went to uh, Australia um, earlier this year oh, wow. and found they had a special visa f for people, you know, non-Australians to come in and do work. For, right. Like, like kids. Yeah. You know, over the summer, whatever. Uh, and, and there were a lot of kids around. Absolutely. Working, college kids and the like. And, I, you know, I thought that was uh, very enlightened. Yeah. And so I, it, gets, it takes me to my next question to you is what about visas? Are, are visas easier now or harder? We know the United yeah. States, we got a different, uh, and some people call it a cockamamie policy about shutting people out and being isolationist. Yeah. Um, and that's our problem. But I'm wondering about the rest of the world. Is it easier to travel, easier to get a visa, easier to enter and so forth? For people in the U.S., what I've found is we have it so much easier than anyone else. There are still challenges sometimes, um, and there are also rules that you should research if you're going to stay for any period of time longer than a month. But for travel less than a month, as long as you're able to get a hold of a passport as an American, it's super, super simple to pretty much go anywhere on the planet. Um, I am not the most uh, regular international traveler. I leave maybe three times a year to go somewhere internationally. And I've never gone anywhere where I've had any sort of problem just showing my passport, getting a visa when I show up, and, and things are good. Um, when I did go to Africa, uh, we got to the airport in Africa, and it was a little bit of a, um, it, it felt like a scam. <laughs> it really well, did. Don't they say well, if it feels like a scam, it may very well be a scam? Well be. <laughs> they had a piece of paper, and it was just a regular sheet of paper, didn't, didn't have anything special about it, that says, American visas, $100, everybody else, 30 And it, it didn't seem... What does that mean? It, was, it didn't <laughs> seem like there was any difference. It's just that if you could read this piece of paper in English, you had to give that money if you showed your passport. But I don't know if it was just the people there put that paper up that morning and decided to do it, but... The people in the uniforms. Yeah, the people in the uniforms who work there. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe it is just their policy, their process. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's bribery and corruption, it too. It could you know? be, it could be. Did you pay the money? You know, I did, I did. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I forgot. There's no need to know? have a confrontation exactly. about this. I'm gonna buy a seven bottle, dollar bottle of gin. <laughs> I don't need to worry about the hundred to get in. So what about countries that may be a little bit 
mm, unstable. Yeah. I mean, um, if I if I get it in my mind, and I'm sure my wife wouldn't come on this one, uh, that I want to go see all the sites in Syria. <laughs> 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 what, what, do I call you or what? Well, I mean, you know, uh, there are there are uh, choices that any travel organization makes. Uh, I used to work on a cruise ship, and there was a period of time where we did a Mediterranean cruise, and we would stop in Casablanca. Well, where they made the movie, right? <laughs> Two out of the six tours that I did on that trip, they canceled that stop because there was too high of a risk to the passengers. And me- a Risk of what? A, a risk of danger. I, I'm not exactly pirates. sure what dangers, not so much the pirates. Terrorists. Terrorists, uh, um, theft, injury, um, social unrest, you know, a civil war or something like that. Yeah. And in general, if the plane will take you there, I'll go. I have no problem. If you have to like make special arrangements and like, you know, hey, can I get smuggled in this way because my airline won't do it, then maybe maybe not. You know what I mean? I'm not a I'm not a, you know, photojournalist. I'm not looking to catch the action. But as long as as long as through just normal, you know, I clicked it, I booked it, I go type of action yeah. and they'll let me go, yeah. I'm not. So I shouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Remember the Achille Loro? It was a ship, it was a cruise ship in the, in the Mediterranean and these terrorists get on the ship. Yeah. It was this poor man who was in a wheelchair and they threw him over the side or killed him in some way. That is I mean, it was really, that was not good for the cruise business. No. Um, but it's a long time ago now yeah. and, and then, you know, and then the, the movie with uh, Tom Hanks about mm. the pirates yes. uh, off the east coast of Africa. Yes. Um, you know, you worry about that. Yeah. And of course, you always hear about, um, you know, these weird things that happen on planes. Um, although they don't seem to be happening right now much. Right. Knock wood. We have <laughs> knock wood on it. But, those, you know, there are risks. And so um, I, I really wonder if, if you feel that the risks are increasing or decreasing. And if you could give us some advice about how to minimize those risks if I happen to be a kind of mm, risk-averse person. Right. So um, what I believe is that there are some things that will just happen and, and there's really no avoiding it. Personally, if you are trying to fully be adverse to risk, be the bubble boy, live in your house, never leave and, and be safe. That's not life to me, that's not living. I think that as long as you're well, not. What was your first statement that we put in question one? What was it? Pack again? more life into your Pack years. Pack more life into your yeah. years. Yeah. Okay. You know, because. You've got to take risks. You, you have to take a certain number of risks. Now, it's good to be smart. It's good to, it's good to pay attention. But I, I do believe part of the reason maybe why those young ladies were able to make it around the globe without problem is the aloha spirit, the, the idea of smiling at people, talking, being nice. It's currency around the world. If you're just respectful to other cultures and other people, you personally are less likely to get into individual specific trouble. Yeah. I do remember on the cruise ship though, uh, when I was working if on Norwegian. If you buy a bottle of gin, it helps. Exactly. <laughs> we, had, we had water cannons on board the ship to deter pirates. And so there are bad people out there. There are bad people out there looking to do bad things, looking to take advantage of people who have more than them, who, who they believe can get them more. Um, and I believe that travel is one of the things that will reduce that. The more of the world that sees the rest of the world, experiences other cultures, the less hate there will be, the more understanding there will be, the less people will want, will want to take from each other, yeah. and the more they'll want to collaborate with each other to, to create yeah. abundance around the world. It reminds me of a, a trip I took to Israel. And um, they told us in no uncertain terms that we're gonna take you on the perimeter. Mm. We're gonna take you on the borders of this country, right. all around the borders of this country. Why? Because we want to have a, a presence and we want you to see it. We want them to see you. We want you to be there at the border. It's yeah. a better, more in interesting trip if you do that. Yeah. And so, and so I mean, I think <laughs> that actually applies in many, in many trips. Absolutely. So I, I, need your, uh, I need your prognostication, your prediction going forward, okay. Joe. How, how is this going to evolve? Are, are these clubs you're talking about, are they going to become the, you know, the coin of the realm, are they going to become ubiquitous everywhere? Are we all going to be flying on these clubs and all going to be meeting in foreign countries on these clubs? 
Um, well, give me your, your imprimatur about what's going to happen going forward. Right. Uh, my belief is that the world is realizing that the model where there is a big separate company that advertises to the people, the sheeple, that will, will just follow the pack and pay them to do all that is going away. We look at things like Amazon, where they created something, you didn't have to pay to shop, but there are more Amazon Prime shoppers then there are just regular Amazon shoppers because people are willing to pay to be part of something that provides added value. You look at things like Uber and Lyft that have completely revolutionized the taxi industry because people are willing to use technology rather than corporations. So you're running a parallel things. on this. Uber, Absolutely. Lyft, and these clubs. It's yeah. all in the same uh, high-tech um, bailiwick. Right, because the idea is through technology, we're able to bring people globally together. And through people coming together, I just believe that people can do more together. It's actually one of our taglines is together goes further. That's your third uh, question on the, on the final exam. It's only three. <laughs> I don't think there's more than three. <laughs> system, pack more life into your ears, and, That's and together goes further. <laughs> the other one was systems. System, save yourself significant time, energy, and money. And the third one just now? Is uh, together goes further. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to ask is, uh, we, we've been talking about foreign travel, we've been talking <laughs> yeah. about foreign countries, and you know that's its own challenge and its own right. reward. Um, uh, but what about you know domestic travel? Right. Are these clubs also active domestically? Oh, absolutely. And I save money in the same way. Uh, but but you know, uh, when you were talking about the foreign travel, you're talking about tourist type travel. Right. Uh, um, when I, when you're talking about domestic travel, you're talking about business travel right. and tourist travel. What are we talking about here? Pretty much a combination of it all. The the goal of companies like this, and specifically mine, is to change the travel industry to a point where people are no longer paying for travel as like a, a luxury. They're, they're paying for travel as kind of a byproduct of what they do. They just live on our planet. And so they're able to get places on our planet because they live on our planet. Um, with the domestic travel, we do have the tourist travel. Like I have a story where I, I went to Colorado <coughs> and I stayed at the Sheraton downtown Denver. I had an experience where I got to drive supercars through the mountains. I drove a McLaren and a Nissan GTR, and the entire trip cost me $109. It was absolutely you incredible. You hear about that kind of thing all the time now. Incredible. Uh, one of our hosts went to Japan for, I think it was $200 round trip. Yeah. And somebody, uh, you know, East Coast was $100 or something. Yep. So, I mean, what's happening is these deals, and, and uh, you want to get the deals, and the clubs help you do that. Absolutely. Now, do the clubs help you stop them when they try to raise your luggage charge from $25 to $30? I read about that this morning. Right. Before you know it, every airline is going to be charging $30 for a, a piece of luggage. Can Absolutely. you stop that? Will you stop that? Will this process stop that? There are lots of different things that could come from this, because as people expect lower price travel, Places will say, okay, fine, we'll bring our prices down for those who want to pay for just the gas in the seat. And for those who want more, you'll pay more. Um, the idea of a world where you have your two bags and your uh, carry-on included with a meal included and what are behind us for now. What I do believe is that as people's abundance level comes up through, you know, just a recognized recognition of, of production versus hourly concept of thinking with regards to money, um, we'll be willing to pay more up front to get it all in. Well, I can, I can see a club with political moment mm -hmm. where you, on behalf of the club, visit this airline that just raised it from 25 to 30 and say, you guys, we don't like that. And we are not going to put you in our, in our club offerings. Yeah. So you bring it down again. Absolutely. And you know what? You might win. Yeah. Joe Graves, man of the future. Thank you so much. It is professional a professional tourist. <laughs> it's a pleasure sitting with you, Jay. Thank oh, you so much oh, for your time. Oh. Aloha. <laughs>